Tom Peters once said, the day firing becomes easy is the day to fire yourself. And the truth is, there's nothing harder for a manager to do than to let people go. But hard as it is, it's sometimes unavoidable. If you stay in a management or leadership position long enough, chances are you're going to have to fire someone. Or worse, you might be forced to make multi-employee layoff decisions, or at least be the one picked to implement those decisions. So the question is, how do we do it? How do we terminate someone from our organization in a way that preserves their dignity and reputation, while also minimizing the impact on the company's morale, as well as the company's performance? In this course, we're going to show you how to do exactly that. Firing an employee can cost employers up to 150% of their salary in finding replacements. Employee lawsuits based on wrongful termination can cost companies up to $250,000. These statistics show that layoffs and firings are an increasingly important area that businesses should consider. Our course is going to consist of a series of critical discussion points. These are designed to cover this broad topic as thoroughly as possible, to encourage growth in these vital areas, and to facilitate a real and fruitful discussion within your organization about how you can each improve on these essential characteristics, both at work and in your personal lives in general. Some of these will be pretty lengthy and some will be relatively straightforward and brief. At the very end of this roadmap comes the most important final step. Discussion time. Do not skip this. This is the most important part of this training. When you finish this course, you need to spend at least an hour or so going over the questions we supply at the end as a group. Whoever's the head honcho in the group should designate a facilitator whose responsibility it is that each question is covered and that everyone, time permitting, is able to have their say. Make sure all contributions are valued, all suggestions considered, and all opinions respected. So let's move into the first discussion point. No matter how well your recruitment is, there will be times where you'll have bad hires. These are candidates with an outstanding resume, where you had high hopes for, yet couldn't perform well with their current position. In these kinds of situations, you can't just simply hope for the best. Rather, you need to take control of the situation ASAP. Of course, this doesn't necessarily mean that firing is your first go-to option. Instead, you can use the power of conversation to readjust their thinking. You can do that by sitting down with the individual and openly expressing your concerns. Use point of view questions that help them realize the crux of the issue. By using the right words, you can help them reorganize that there's indeed a problem with their performance at work. Why is such a conversation powerful? There are two reasons. First, if the employee takes the words by heart, they will no doubt make the effort to make changes drastically to prove that they're worthy of the position. On the other hand, giving them time to meditate on your conversation might lead them to humbly accept that they may not be the best fit that the company thought they would be. In some cases, meditating on those words may lead them to decide to quit on their own. Whichever the result is, Talking with them first is a good way of taking action as if you're saying, I'm giving you a second chance. Of course, 
even after such conversations, not everyone is willing to make changes for the better. If that's the case, then firing them is a clear option. However, you can't just fire someone on the spot. Like all important matters, careful preparation is needed to ensure that the process will be executed smoothly. First in the preparation list is practicing what you plan to say to your employee. This is important as you don't want your nerves and emotions to get in the way of your main objective. To make sure you'll say the right words, write down the main point you want to impart during your conversation. The next thing you need to do is to prepare all required documentation so you can make the firing process as smooth and as legal as possible. Using the documentation, it's your job to explain the process of termination, such as leaving the building, returning company-owned items, the longevity of benefits, and etc. You don't want to drag your employee as soon as they check in for work, just to say that they're fired on that same day. More importantly, you want to avoid firing someone in a bad state of mind. To make the process as seamless as possible, choose a proper time and place. For some, they would prefer to do it earlier in the week and not on a Friday. As for the time, Others would do it during lunch break or a specific time where business impacts are at a minimum. Quiet places such as conference rooms can be good locations for such conversations. When you're about to fire someone, make sure that you have the right mental state before you perform such an action. Make sure to have at least 15 minutes before the meeting to unwind and clear your head before talking to them. Giving enough time to compose yourself also helps you to make sure that the words coming out of your mouth are coming from the right place. Firing an employee should be based solely on legal reasons. These facts refer to the terms and conditions that they agreed upon when they signed the contract with your business. You can't fire them because of their individuality or as an act of discrimination. Moreover, you can't fire an employee for valid reasons such as taking medical leave. Rather, you want to make sure that your actions are constitutional. As you're talking to them, review the contract and state the reasons why you can end their employment. This is especially true if your employee violated a company's policy. Firing is a sensitive and emotional situation, as you'll never know how someone will react to the decision. It would be wise to have another person present, like an HR representative, or someone else you trust in the room with when the process takes place and can act as a mediator and peacemaker if necessary. It should never come as a surprise to your employee when they're about to get fired. This is because they should have been receiving real-time feedback from the management all along. As mentioned earlier, talking to them privately is both an encouragement and a warning for them. If your employee has been consistently displaying unsatisfactory performance, conduct a performance review before firing them. Performance reviews are typically done twice a year helping both employers and employees themselves gauge if they are performing well. Data gathered from these reviews can be used to determine what tips and advice you can give for them to improve, as well as what you expect from them moving forward. However, after you've given enough time for them to adjust but still no signs of progress made, firing is your last resort. Before firing, you need to document the employee's performance in writing. This is necessary to prevent possible arguments and will be valuable if you need to defend your actions legally. Normally, you want to tell employees that you let one of their co-workers go. You can share the news while adding that there will be new changes in workload or new opportunities available. But remember to control yourself as you share this news with them. Don't go into detail about why the person was fired, as this can quickly turn to rumors. Instead, remain professional by keeping such matters confidential. 
Firing is not impulsive. You don't fire someone today and then wink at the other one tomorrow. As an employer, you should enforce company policies and procedures consistently and religiously. This maintains professionalism within the company and helps employees understand that the business takes these things seriously. Terminating an employee should be simple and straight to the point. After all, you don't need to sugarcoat your words to someone who deserves to get fired. Here's an example of a straightforward sentence. I have some bad news for you. Today is your last day here. Next, state the specific reason why you need to fire them. For example, you can say, We've let you go because you failed to meet your sales targets for the past X months. Few sentences are enough to show that you're clear with your reasons and firm with your decision. Besides telling them in private, you also want your employee to leave with dignity. This means allowing your employee to have privacy on his departure. Don't make them empty their desk and walk out in front of his or her colleagues during the day. You can arrange for after-hour or weekend packing if possible. After you fired an employee, maybe it's time to have a little self-assessment. Ask yourself, are we really doing a great job in our hiring, supporting, and developing processes? Analyze your company report. If you notice that several employees have been fired in the past year, maybe it's time to address the problems within the HR management. At times of financial crisis, Many businesses and establishments have decided to lay off some of their employees. However, layoffs shouldn't be abrupt. You can just ditch your employees by simply telling them that they can no longer work anymore. As an employer, you need to give them enough time to settle things so they can move forward. Layoffs are more than just knowing which positions should be eliminated. Other factors need to be considered before executing such a decision. Making a layoff plan will ensure that you'll make the transition as smooth as possible. For instance, how will you deliver the news to your staff? Will you be needing some employees to stay for a while to help during the transition phase? What arrangements do you have regarding severance packages? Another thing to consider is how you can give them advance notice to your employees before the layoff. For example, according to the Worker Adjustment and Retraining Notification Act, or the WARN Act, if your business has 100 or more employees and meets the qualification standard, a 60-day notice must be observed. Also, make sure to check the requirements in your state laws. Mutual respect should be the foundation throughout the work cycle of employees. Respect can be seen from onboarding to coaching and counseling. The same level of respect should also be seen when you decide to let them go. Of course, having these kinds of conversations can be very hard, especially if your employees only have their jobs as their only source of income. As you share the burdensome news, make sure to emphasize that it's not their fault and the decision that you made has nothing to do with them. For example, you might say, due to the pandemic and absolutely nothing related to you, we've had to make some tough decisions that affect your job. Sadly, X date will be your last date with the company. I'm very sorry. Hearing the news can be really painful, but letting them know that they aren't at fault lessens the sting out of the conversation. Of course, laying off doesn't necessarily mean a complete wipeout of staff. Every layoff is preceded by an adjustment phase. This is called the transitional period. For this phase, key employees with essential skills are retained for a short time, usually to train other employees that will handle the new roles and responsibilities. When speaking to these employees, you could say, we do have some specific needs in the immediate future and we're hoping you can stick around for a while to help in this process. 
Such an offer encourages employees to continue to receive company benefits while finding a new job. During this phase, you might find that some employees' part of the layoff is actually too valuable to let go of. While it may seem you're overturning such decisions, making these last-minute changes can eventually save your company from making a costly mistake in the long run. If you've specifically asked employees to stay during the transitional period, let them know how much you value them, not just verbally, but by means of incentives too. The conventional way for layoffs is by offering perks that encourage team members to remain with your team and continue to do a good job. For example, for those employees who want to leave immediately when layoffs are announced, you can offer a severance package for up to six weeks. However, you can offer a 12-week severance package for those who would like to stay for another month. Another thing to consider is the retention bonus. This is a financial incentive for the staff willing to stay during the transition phase. This can either be a lump sum at the end of their transitional period or divided by the number of months during the process. Of course, do not expect that everyone will grab this opportunity. Be prepared if others will turn down your proposal. Either way, giving them options can help them to process the news and maybe discuss the offer with their families. For the employees who agreed to stay during the transition phase, make sure to offer them enough time to search for new jobs. You can't force them to still complete a fixed 40-hour work week when they're about to lose their job soon. Offering them flexibility gives them a chance to apply for new jobs and go on job interviews. You can even offer them reduced hours or remote work. Giving them flexibility to your departing team is basically saying, Thank you for all of their hard work. When you show that you're willing to support them and work with their schedules as they move forward, they'll be much happier working for the remainder of the work and will guarantee that your relationship will end on a positive note. Showing appreciation can be shown not only when people are working for you, but also when they're leaving. If possible, Make arrangements for outplacement assistance for those affected of the layoff. There are several third-party services that you can use to assist your employees as they find new work. These services can include resume writing, job search assistance, career counseling, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and more. Additionally, you can also offer to provide letters of recommendation to your network. Giving a helping hand shows that you are concerned about their future and their well-being. You'll never know. They might be willing to work for you again in the future. This is why maintaining healthy relationships with your employees is essential. Although you can technically impart your decision through text, call, or email, layoffs should be done face-to-face. When it's time to let an employee know that you have to let them go, it would be best to find a private place for a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You can also bring an HR rep with you as well. And again, while you can tell the meeting details digitally, the actual news must be told in person. Having a face-to-face -face conversation is very important as it's your way to express sincerity and to assure them that they had nothing to do with being laid off. Speaking to them in person is also a good time to listen, as they may express their emotions after hearing the news. You also grab this opportunity to assure them that they will receive assistance, and that you'll assist them in finding a new job. How can you show empathy to your workers? By listening. Receiving such news will be hard to process. Expect to see emotions come out after. If they need to air their grievances, let them be. As it can be emotional, have a box of tissues ready, just in case. You should understand that these people, in a sense, have the right to express their emotions, as some of them may have committed ample time and energy to your business, and will now find a new source of income. So instead of ending the meeting abruptly, 
Sit back and listen. You may not be able to overturn your decision, but showing empathy will make the process far easier and will help your employee eventually humbly accept your decision. And now it's discussion time, the most important part of this training. Whoever's the head honcho in the group should designate a facilitator whose responsibility it is that each of the questions you see on your screen is covered and that everyone, time permitting, is able to have their say. Make sure all contributions are valued, all suggestions considered, and all opinions respected. 